if your desktop computer or laptop or tablet or even smartphone isn't turning on or it does turn on with LED lights and fan spinning but nothing shows up on the display or the monitor then you should consider getting it fixed by a super competent professional handsome technician this guy but if you're too cheap for that then in today's video I'm going to give you 10 super easy troubleshooting and repair tips to help you fix your own device at home coming up roll the intro Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Hear My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing entrepreneur tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video, but I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. So all desktop computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones, and the likes are nothing but computers and not just your personal social media gateway. And they work exactly in the same way and they have exactly the same parts, except the parts are designed in different shapes to fit the device. So today we're dealing with a traditional desktop computer scenario. And in future videos, we're gonna tackle the other devices, except for the iPhone X or 10, because I prefer to wait for the iPhone 2X or 20, which is meant to debut in 2020, as long as I can get my hands on some Apple genius designers and sell the product back to Apple. Hey, why are you laughing or cringing or shaking your head? It can happen. You're not the master of destiny. Wait and see. So make sure you stay till the end for more information on that coming up. All of these type of devices essentially have the following 10 components in common. Number one, they have an external case of some sort. Number two, they have power, and in this case coming through the power supply. Number three, there's a motherboard or logic board as we call in some devices. Number four, there is a processor, and in here it's hiding underneath this cooler or we also call it a CPU. Number five, there's RAM or memory. Number six, there's usually a video card, like a graphics card, this is a discrete one, or it can also be a video chip, which is either embedded on the motherboard or in an APU, the accelerated processing unit from AMD. In that case, there will be something of a video chip also on the processor. Number seven, there are various cables and uh, connectors that connects all the parts together. Number eight, you usually have a monitor or a screen of some sort to be able to see what you're doing. Number nine, there is usually a storage device. It could be a traditional hard disk drive like this one or a flash-based drive like an SSD. And number 10, there will be some sort of operating system like Windows, Mac or Linux on the computer or on the smartphone, it'll be Windows, Android or iOS. So if you can understand how this desktop computer works, you can pretty much apply the same principle and fix any device at home relatively easy, unless you're really lazy or dumb, or worse, you're lazy and dumb. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Okay, so a traditional desktop computer come in two main forms, a standard form or a non-standard form. This is approximately a standard mid-tower ATX motherboard. The motherboard inside is called an ATX motherboard. There are smaller motherboards which are called micro ATX and there are bigger ones as well. Now, in a desktop like this one, this is from HP, this is like a slimline version or SFF, small form factor, a lot thinner. And uh, the motherboard and the power supply and sometimes a few other devices are non-standard form factors, which means trying to get parts for them are usually quite expensive and difficult. Some computer partners of uh, manufacturing companies usually like their own branded proprietary designs, and that only leaves you with no choice but to get their own parts for replacement. In other words, modern corporate slavery. I usually do not recommend to buy proprietary designs or some branded uh, weird uh, shapes and forms of desktop computers. But hey, if you're getting it for free, then that's a great way to buy. Because write that down, that's investment 101. Buying things for nothing is good. Okay, so this is a traditional desktop computer with all the relevant parts that we've talked about. However, sometimes you'll have a desktop computer. In this case, there is no discrete graphics card. Okay, and the video card is gonna be like a chip on the motherboard itself and it will be plugged in using this old VGA cable. 
and uh, these kind of uh, desktop computers a bit more difficult to troubleshoot when it comes to video signal problems but we'll get to that later okay so your problem if your computer isn't turning on or turns on but no display is going to be a combination of one of three things either hardware issue or software issue or a combination of both hardware and software number ones to nine that we mentioned earlier are all to do with hardware issues and from number 10 and onwards because there's more it's going to be mainly software issue because that's to do with the operating system now it's very important that you understand how a computer works once you turn it on there is a sequence which all computer devices go through and if you understand the sequence you are able to troubleshoot exactly what the problem is in which part of the sequence you can easily replace that part so let's go through it so when you turn a computer on, power comes from the electrical outlet into this power supply here. Usually in forms of AC alternating current and in UK it's about 230 volt, can vary worldwide. This gets transformed into what we call DC direct current from the power supply and it transforms it to 3.3 volts or 5 volts or 12 volts mainly. And it feeds the power to the motherboard. Now, on the motherboard, there is a small software usually embedded on a flash memory chip, which is called the BIOS, the Basic Input Output System. And what that does, it initializes the processor, and the first task is to run a series of tests called POST, P-O-S-T, Power On Self Test. So that's going to be checking for things like the BIOS chip, CMOS RAM, video card or chip, etc. Basically looking for any hardware failure issues. The post will complete and if no issues are found, you will hear one single beep, usually to indicate there are no problems. If you hear at this stage different types of beeps like one continuous beep or intermittent beeps or short beeps or longer beeps, then you should make a note of the frequency and number and you should compare to the manufacturing chart of the specific makes and models because each beep type will indicate that there's a problem somewhere. It could be a RAM issue, it could be a video card issue. If nothing is heard but the computer still boots up, it just simply could mean that on this one uh, there is a speaker cable. I'll show you that close up later. But on some computers there may not be a speaker cable or the speaker cable may be damaged. So you may not hear a beep but the computer still can boot up. Now, while it's doing its post, on the computer or monitor, you're going to see a series of information like the BIOS manufacturer and revision, the processor specs, the amount of RAM installed and the drives detected. Many modern PCs have now actually replaced this information in form of a splash screen with the manufacturer logo, but you can usually disable that if you prefer to see the text in the CMOS setting. Now, the BIOS then looks for an operating system on a drive which is usually located on the first sector of a designated drive, like a hard disk drive or an SSD or even sometimes on a USB stick. And that drive is usually set as an order of boot in the CMOS setting. Sometimes that CMOS setting can be wrong or it could have been changed, especially if you are replacing a drive or you're reinstalling a new OS or in some cases when you do a dual boot, that can be messed up and the computer will not boot up. Now that OS is usually located on the first sector and that's called the boot strap or the boot loader. So once the BIOS confirms the boot loader, it loads it onto the memory and from there the memory takes over and the OS can start loading onto your logging screen or desktop environment, whether it's Windows, Linux or Mac mainly. So up until that OS loading up or booting up, any issue before that, if it's not going to the OS, it means that there's a hardware problem. And from the OS, that would be mostly software issues. Now, sometimes you can have a combination of both hardware and software issue, but you have to fix the hardware issue first, otherwise you won't be able to find out what's wrong with the software. Okay, so these top troubleshooting tips that I mentioned before when we went through one to 10, is meant to help you identify at least one or more of the things which is causing your computer not to turn on or not to boot up. For most home users, finding out which part is causing the issue and replacing that will be far cheaper than paying someone to try and get it diagnosed and repaired, especially when it comes to things like the power supply repair or motherboard repair or graphics card repair or even hard disk drive. Not only will you have a hard time finding someone who is willing and able to do components repair on a board, but it will cost you even more in some cases than buying a whole new full desktop computer. Besides, for most of my viewers, 
according to the type of questions I get, this type of component repair is going to be beyond their scope of understanding and ability. As for me, I'm not skilled enough yet to be able to do component repair, not just yet. Meaning using a multimeter and a soldering kit to try and diagnose and repair those microchip components. It's quite difficult these days. Okay, some of these fixes that I've talked about here, I've already dealt with in previous videos, and I'm going to put a link either in the cards above or below. It could also be a playlist, and you can easily check them out. However, as customary on YouTube, many times us content creators, we are very disorganized and our content is all over the place. We don't necessarily follow a logical order of the uploads. And it's not always intentional, it's sometimes it's situational. But I wanted to change that because I can't respond to every single scenario, to every question that I've gotten, because there's far too many. But I'm very confident that with this series I'm going to do, this will help most of you fix your problem. You'll understand it better, hopefully. So I'm gonna be doing the continuation of this series in the next 10 parts. We're gonna start with the power issues. I've dealt with this before where we identified that it was a power problem from the power supply, but it wasn't a complete tutorial and there are some follow-ups to do. So the next one will be the power and we're gonna work down the list of the one to 10 things I've mentioned earlier. I haven't thought about what to call the series yet, but I'm looking for something a bit catchy and branded maybe, you know, something humble like the most bestest computer repair tutorial of all time, part one. You let me know down below what you think or give me some better suggestions. You might be hard pressed to find something better. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified. And if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback. So it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you wanna ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this vid and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.